talk about fabric and which types of fabrics are best to use for certain types of embroidery projects. So if I was going to do something like this, a type of fabric or a type of project that's just going to stay in the hoop, something that I need nice and flat, um, I'm going to use something like a muslin or a cotton linen, a cotton muslin or a cotton linen. And let me show you a piece of linen that I have here. Their muslin and linen are very similar. Um, you can see that this fabric is very, very thin, which is great because it's really, really easy to push a needle through this. So it's gonna be super easy. You're not gonna have to use a lot of effort. And something that's really important when choosing a fabric for embroidery is that you wanna choose a fabric that um, is not very stretchy. You can see that this cotton um, linen is not very stretchy at all. It doesn't have a lot of give to it. And that is really, really perfect for embroidery because like I said before, we wanna have a nice flat um, project in the end. We don't wanna see lots of crinkles or buckling. And what happens with stretchy fabrics is they tighten up really a lot when you put them into your embroidery hoop. And then when you take them out, they have a tendency to shrink back. And that's gonna get you some weird warping of your fabric and of your project, which is what we do not want. So a cotton muslin or a cotton linen is really great, has very little stretch, and they're really nice and thin, super easy to get your needle through. Now let's say I wanted to do something like a patch. You can see this patch, this patch that I've created here. Um, this is something that I could sew onto a backpack or a bag or a jacket or even the pocket of a pair of jeans if I wanted to. But for a patch, you want something that's a little bit more uh, stable or has a little bit more structure, something that's a little stronger. So something I like to use is called felt. And you can see that this felt is quite a bit thicker than the muslin and the linen, and it almost looks like paper a little bit. It doesn't have a, the, quite the same texture. It's not quite as smooth, but again, it doesn't have hardly any stretch in it at all, and it's really nice and strong. So it's gonna be great for something like a patch. Now, something else that I like to do a lot is I like to sew onto clothing. And some of the, my favorite clothing to sew onto are jeans. So. A pair of pants or like this jean jacket that I've made. Now there are some problems when you're working with jean because a lot of times jean tends to be kind of stretchy so that's something you have to be aware of. Make sure you're not pulling your jean too tight in your embroidery hoop so that you don't get any um, puckering or buckling of your fabric. Um, and depending on where you're sewing on jeans is you have this these areas where the jean has been sewn together for the different parts of the, of the clothing item. And that can be really difficult to get your needle through because it's very thick and jean is a pretty tough material. So there are some pros and cons to jeans, um, but just try and find place on the jean that you're working, places on the jean that you're working with where the fabric is nice and thin. You have a nice open panel like somewhere on the back or even on the, on the shoulder of the sleeve, on the yoke of the jacket, and there are even some places on the front of the jacket, like right up here above the pocket, that are nice open spaces where it would be relatively easy to get your needle through. So let's talk about how to use your embroidery hoop and how to put your fabric so that it's nice and neat in your embroidery hoop so it's ready for you to go with go on with your embroidery. Now an embroidery hoop, they come in lots of different sizes. This is a five inch embroidery hoop. You can tell because it's got a little five at the top. And there are two parts to this embroidery hoop. We have an inner ring and an outer ring, okay? So first thing you want to do is you wanna make sure that your fabric is big enough to fit all the way around the inner hoop. Okay, and I like to give myself quite a lot of extra space just so that I know when it's in that embroidery hoop, I know it's not gonna pull out at all, okay? So with your embroidery hoop, you wanna turn it to the side. Most embroidery hoops, you will notice, have kind of two different edges. 
this edge on the left is very smooth, but you'll see, you can kind of see that and feel it with your thumb, that this, the right side has an edge, a little bit of a lip on it, okay? Now I want that edge, the side with the lip, to be facing up. That's gonna really help make sure that you have a nice even pressure all the way across your fabric when you put it in your hoop. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my embroidery hoop, the inside ring with that lip edge up towards me, take my fabric and place it over the top. Then I'll take my top part, my outer embroidery hoop, and on this you'll notice that the top has this little adjustable area that you can tighten down or loosen up depending on the thickness of your fabric. Right now I want it to be fairly loose. So then I'm just going to kind of click it over and I maybe need to loosen it a little bit more. Click it over my inner hoop with the fabric in between. And I want to make sure, oh, did you see that? You see that little click? I want to make sure that 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 the top lip of that inner ring is over the edge of my outer hoop. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to tighten it down. I'm not going to tighten it down all the way right now, just a little bit. While it's fairly tight, then you can see I still have some kind of wrinkles in my fabric. I'm going to just gently, ever so gently, tug on those edges of my fabric just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And I don't want to pull it too tight because again if we tighten our fabric too much inside our embroidery hoop, when we let it go it's going to shrink and buckle and make some weird wrinkles. Once I've got it nice and smooth then I'm going to just tighten it down the rest of the way. And you don't have to do this too much, just a little bit of pressure so it's nice and tight. And there you have it. Now you're ready to go on your embroidery. Now, make sure that there is a tiny bit of give in the fabric. And if it's maybe a little too much, then you can adjust it as you need. Now let's talk about embroidery thread. <clears throat> this is a very special type of thread Okay, we don't want to use, um, for embroidery, we don't want to use the thread that we would use to sew with. It just doesn't have the right texture, it doesn't have the right give, and it's a little bit more expensive. Okay, so you'll notice that this single piece of embroidery thread that I have has several strands that are all twisted together. Now, generally, now there should be six, it might be a little hard to tell, but there are six strands that are all woven, twisted together. Now with embroidery, most of the time what we do is we actually split our single piece of thread um, because the hole is sometimes a little bit too thick to pull all the way through your fabric. Now the easiest way to do that is to go to the top edge of your, of your um, thread and split it apart into two halves in just the easiest, nat most natural way. So that you have three on one side and three strands on the other. Then what I like to do is I like to take those two threads on either side of my pointer finger. Then I use the pointer finger on my other hand to help split those apart just to make it a little easier. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently and slowly, if you do this too fast, your thread is gonna knot and it's gonna be very frustrating just gently start pulling those apart. Make sure they're not going to get tangled. Just like that. So now I have two pieces of three stranded thread that I can use in my embroidery. Now from here, I want to show you a couple of tips and tricks um, to thread your needle for embroidery. Now, first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you tie a knot in one end of your embroidery thread so that it doesn't pull all the way through. Now what we want to do, this is the easiest way that I have found 
that gives me a nice big knot at the end of my thread because sometimes if you have a loose weave of fabric, a really tiny knot in your thread is gonna pull all the way through your fabric and that doesn't do you any good. So what I'm going to do to make a knot in my embroidery thread is I'm gonna take my pointer finger and my thumb and I'm going to pinch the end just like that. Then I'm going to, with my other hand, take a loop around the top, just like that, of my pointer finger and just kind of squish, cinch it in there again, just like that. One more time, I'm going to take my uh, pointer finger and my thumb, pinch the end of my thread, then take that thread, loop it over the top of my pointer finger and cinch it, cinch the thread back underneath my, uh, underneath my finger in between my thumb. Then from there, this is the tricky part, watch closely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start rolling that thread in between my fingers by pulling back on my pointer finger and you'll start to see right there that the thread is kind of starting to loop over itself and I'm going to do that so that it loops a couple of times, like maybe two or three. Then I'm going to take my middle finger, use my nail to stop it up at the top of that little roll that I've made. Use my nail to kind of hold it in place. Then I'm gonna let go with my pointer finger. Then I'm gonna pull with my other hand until I can feel that knot being formed. And there you have it. Ta-da! A nice big knot in the end of my thread that isn't going to accidentally pop through my fabric. So let's do that one more time with another piece of thread, okay? Pinch, loop around, tuck it in, scooch it back with your index finger so that the fabric roll, or that the thread rolls a couple of times. Use my middle finger nail to hold it in place while I pull on the thread with my other hand and create a nice knot, just like that. Then from there, once you have your thread knotted on one side, then all you have to do is thread your needle, which can sometimes be the most annoying, trickiest part. Now what I like to do is make sure that I, that all of my thread ends are the same length. That's gonna make it a lot easier. So if they're not even, just going to, oh, let's have this focus. I'm just going to trim the edges of my thread so that they're all the same length. And then I'm going to put my fingers kind of close to the edge of the thread and thread it through, just like that. Now, if you're having trouble, sometimes you can Something that helps is if you wet with a little bit of water or if you even want to use a little bit of spit. Um, I wouldn't suggest that because it's very unsanitary, but a little bit of water on the edge of that is going to help those stick together and going to help threading your needle. It's going to help you thread your needle a little bit easier. And there you have it. Now you have everything ready. You have your fabric, you have a knot on the end of your thread, and you have your needle threaded. So now you're ready to go.